Let's go into the word of God on this morning. Today we are coming from Luke chapter 24. Luke 24. And we're going to look at verses 1 through 9. <clears throat> That's Luke 24 verses 1 through 9. All right, verse 1, it says, Now upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus, and it came to pass, as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. Amen. If you're taking notes on today, I am coming from the topic between a rock and a hard place. Between a rock and a hard place. Uh, Grace and what you have here in the text, you have uh, Mary Magdalene, you have Joanna, and you have the mother of Jesus, Mary herself. Um, they come to the tomb uh, and they, they bring spices um, in preparation uh, to prepare the body of Jesus. Um, they, they, they come to the tomb with their spices in hand uh, in expectation to prepare um, the body of Jesus. Now, during that time, um, they did not do embalming at that particular time. That's why they brought spices uh, to the tomb of Jesus and uh, the spices it was to reduce the smell of the body all right so they, they they brought the spices and expectation to prepare the body of Jesus to reduce the smell of his body so they they get to the tomb um, of where Jesus was at with the intention of preparing his body with these spices. And when they get there, they find out that the stone has been rolled away. Now, something probably jumped out of the text for you if you read this text carefully. Watch this. The women are anticipating coming to the tomb to prepare uh, the body of Jesus with these spices, but the stone, watch this, has been rolled away. You see, my question would be, how did you know that the stone would be rolled away? Hmm. Right? You know, uh, uh, how could they have possibly known that the stone that blocked the tomb of Jesus would have been removed. After all, they showed up to the tomb with spices to prepare the body of our Savior. Now, the text does not say this, but maybe as they were on their way to prepare the body, they are probably saying to themselves, this doesn't make any sense at all. Why are we going to prepare the body and there is a stone in front of the tomb. It just doesn't make any any sense. But but Grace Center, uh, 
when we follow the leading of God, what doesn't make sense at the moment will make perfect sense later on. Amen. I'm sure there was a time in your life when you uh, were led to do something and you probably said to yourself, this doesn't make any sense. But yet you still continue to follow the leading of God. You moved when it wasn't popular to move. Uh, you made the phone call and at first it seemed like a stupid thing to do. Uh, you filled out the application and you knew that you were not qualified for that position. And when you follow the prompting of the Holy Spirit, God revealed to you why he told you what he told you. <laughs> yeah. We don't always understand in the moment why we're doing certain things. We don't always understand why God will have us do certain things. But sometimes later on, God will let you know why he told you the very thing to do in the first place. So the women, the women, they, they get to the tomb and the stone is rolled away. And now being that the women were ready to prepare um, the body of Jesus, they expected, watch this, they expected to see a dead body. Stick with me now. Uh, they expected to see a dead body. Now, these women, they, they loved Jesus, but they expected to see him dead. They honored Jesus, but they expected to see him dead. They would never betray Jesus, but they expected to see him dead. Grace, there are many Christians, many believers today. They love God. They honor God, they respect the things of God, but sometimes they expect to see something that's dead. Mm -hmm. They have expectations of staying where they are. They have expectations of receiving what they have always been receiving. They have expectations of always hearing the bad instead of hearing the good. And grace and watch this, we have to get to a point in our lives where we need to raise our level of expectancy. Every morning, when we open up our eyes and take a peek at the rising of the sun, we need to walk in great expectation. Amen. We serve a God that can make the sun stay still, but yet we have no expectation of him. Mm. We serve a God that can Answer your prayer, for it can leave the lips, the lips of your mouth, and yet you have no expectation of what he can do. The women, they went to the tomb expecting to see a dead body. But when they get there, he's not there. He was there, but he's not there anymore. He was, he was placed there, but he's not there anymore. The women are perplexed because the person they were expecting to see is no longer there. Grace, you know, what happens when, you, when it seems like God has let you down? Who else do you turn to when it seems like even God has left you. You know, magicians they um, have developed a lot of a lot of acts, a lot of things that they do. Um, if you have ever seen a magician um, do different type of tricks and so forth, um, it, 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 it seems like the trick is real. Um, you see a card trick they place the cards on the table and they do certain things and they tell you to, you know, pick out a card. You pick out a card and you have a card in your mind of what it is and, and, and you place the card back in the deck and they do different things and next thing you know, they, 
they guess your card and you know they do all these type of things and they make things uh, seems like it may have disappeared. They, they have all these tricks that they do, but that's what it is. They're tricks. Uh, they're illusions. Um, you see, if you, if you think for one moment that God has left you, that's a trick of the enemy. Let me say that one more time. Amen. If you if you think that God has abandoned you, that is a trick of the enemy. Amen. It's not the truth. It's, it's sleight of hand. Um, it's tricking the mind. And the enemy will like for you to think that God has left you. Because if you believe that God has left you, that will leave a door that's open for him to slide in. Mm -hmm. And if the enemy slides in, he's not going to want to let you go. But I'm here to tell you this morning, Grace Center, that God has not and will not leave you. Amen. God will not make you a promise and then break it. Mm -hmm. God will not dangle something in front of you. And then snatch it away. God will not place a desire within you and not help you to fulfill that desire. Yes. Amen. God has not left you nor abandoned you. But the enemy will place things in our minds to trip us up into thinking that God doesn't love us. God doesn't care about us. Uh, God has left you and you want to stay in that situation all your life. <laughs> You're going to keep going around that mountain all your life. Things are not going to get better. You're going to stay in that situation forever. You're going to stay on that same job, same position, same pay Forever, You're going to stay where you're at, in that apartment, in that subdivision, at that, at that residence, at that same place all your life. You're never going to move up. You're going to stay the same. Uh, you're never going to get well. You're always going to have aches and pains in your body. You're going to always have that sickness. You're going to always have that illness. You're going to always have that disease. That's what the enemy Amen. would have you to think. That's right. But that's a trick mm -hmm. of the enemy. Because he'll tell you things like God doesn't love you. And you're going to stay in that situation. But that's why it's important to, to know the word of God ourselves. That's why it's important to uh, uh, learn God ourselves. This is not in my notes here, but I think it's a good detour right here. Watch this. We talk a lot of times about the things we go through in life while we suffer some things in our lives. Watch this. We suffer some things and come out of it so that others can learn from us and we can teach them how to also get over it. Amen. The book of James talks about that, about suffering and getting over certain things and others can learn what we went through. You see, if we never go through anything in life, we will never learn the different angles of God. Amen. The different sides of God. You know, we all want to scream out, Jehovah Jireh, our provider. But, but you know, uh, we don't Ever want to have to, you know, go through things where we need God to be our provider. <laughs> uh, we, we, you know, say Jehovah Rapha, our healer. Well, in order for him to be your healer, sometimes we have to go through some things in life for God to heal us. <laughs> we go through things sometimes to learn the different sides of God and how he has fulfilled his promise to us. By doing exactly what he said he would do. These women, they get to the tomb. 
and they find the tomb, they find the stone rolled away from the tomb. And I'm so glad that they found the stone rolled away. Oh, I'm so glad they, they found the stone rolled away from that tomb. Watch this. Because if the stone wasn't rolled away, uh, it would have been a problem. If the, the stone would have stayed in front of the tomb, oh, we would be in a world of trouble. Hmm. Watch this. Christianity is the only religion where it's God, it's, it's founder, right? Uh, Cain died and rose again. Teach. Oh, let me say that one more time. Christianity is the only the only religion where is God, its founder, right, came, died, and rose again. Uh, no other religion goes that far. Hmm. No other religion goes that far. Hmm. Uh, um, so uh, they, they stop at death. Mm. Other religions. Yeah, they said, uh, uh, we want to stop <laughs> at death. Um, now, they may say something like, well, um, they'll come back as somebody else <laughs> or something else, um, mm. but not the same person. <laughs> Reincarnation and you know, all these other type things is what other religions believe in uh, but no other God in other religions have ever risen from the grave hmm. you see that's why I am so glad that when they get to the tomb the stone is rolled away Amen. because without the rolling away of the stone We'll still be living in our sins even today. Mm -hmm. The resurrection of, of Jesus is the focal point of Christianity. All right? The resurrection of Jesus, you know, is it's, it's the focal point of Christianity. And, and we as Christians, we can... We can vary and we can debate uh, different theological issues. We can do that. You know, we, we can debate you know, uh, post-tribulation, mid-tribulation, pre-tribulation, partial tribulation. We can, we can debate all that stuff. We can debate, you know, is tithing, uh, Old Testament, New Testament. We can debate all of that stuff mm -hmm. um, we can you know differ and you know disagree uh, on the trinity per se different nuances uh, of the trinity you know we can debate on that oh, I, we, we can even differ and disagree and debate on on politics and so forth one christian may be uh, a democrat another christian may be a republican and you know, we can we can debate and differ and disagree on on that we can we can even differ and disagree and debate on sports you know you may like the, the Falcons you may like the Cowboys you may like uh, uh, the Eagles you may like the Steelers you may like the Rams you may like the Lions we can do we can differ and disagree on a lot of different things we can Di differ and disagree on who's the greatest, on, LeBron man. or Jordan, uh, is, 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 is Steph uh, greater than Magic when it comes down to point guards of, of history? We can differ <laughs> and debate on different things as Christians. Sure, we can do that. Um, um, uh, but, but there's one thing, hmm. there is one thing we can never on, differ or disagree on. There is one thing we can never 
debate on. And that is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. We can debate on a whole lot of different things in life. Mm -hmm. We can debate on a lot of different theological ideas and things that we may think is right. Mm. But there is one thing. Yes. And one thing only. One thing. We can never debate on. Amen. And that is the resurrection. Of Jesus Christ, Amen. our Savior, our Messiah. We can never debate or have different opinions <laughs> on if he rose from the grave or not. Oh, we can't debate on that. Christianity, it hangs its entire belief on the resurrection of Jesus. Everything hangs on the resurrection. Everything. Amen. Let me say it one time. Everything. Let me say it like I'm from the country. Everything hangs its hat on the belief on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Paul said it like this. He said that if Christ did not rise from the grave. Our preaching is in vain. Hmm. <laughs> uh, the, the Gospels are in vain. Me coming up here every Sunday, me studying every week, us talking to different people about believing in Jesus. If Jesus never rose, from the grave, all of that would be in vain. Hmm. It would be a waste of time. It would be no need for me to stand here and preach and teach every Sunday. It would be no need for you to tune in behind your computer screens, watch me on a television, watch me on an iPad each and every week if Jesus Christ never rose from the grave. <laughs> That's why I'm so glad that that stone was rolled away. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Because if the stone was never rolled away, we would still be in our sins on today. My Lord. Our lives today will be will be bleak. If the stone hmm. was never rolled away. Hmm. And the enemy would have you to think that. But for those of us. <laughs> who has. Some gray hairs or two. Or who have lost some hairs or two. Uh, we know that our faith. In Jesus. Is not in vain. Amen. We know what we believe in. Is not in vain. We've seen God come through time and time again. And who we serve and what we serve, it is not in vain. It is not a waste of time. It is not a waste of time to pray. It is not a waste of time to read the word. It is not a waste of time to listen mm -hmm. to the man of God proclaim the word of God. It is not a waste of time. Amen. And I'm so glad. That that stone was rolled away. Yes. Do you know? Do you know that there are even uh, uh, shows out there that would uh, 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 try to either prove or disprove the existence of God? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. They they'll look at the Big Bang theory. They'll, you know, uh, study how the earth was once flooded. They were like, well, did it flood? Did it flood in, a, in just one area? Was it the whole earth? I mean, the, the whole earth flooded? Or was it just one part of the earth? They, 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 they studied all this stuff. Hmm. They even tried to recreate uh, the walking on water 
by Jesus? Well, was it cold during the time? Was it a frozen lake? What what exactly happened? What time of the year was it? How can somebody walk on water? They do all these things to disprove the existence of God and Jesus. <laughs> well, you know what? I don't I don't I don't need a television show. I don't need any kind of research papers or studies to, to show me or any kind of scientific experiment mm -hmm. to tell me if God is real or not. Amen. Because I know that he's real. I know he's real. But watch this. By biblical evidence, archaeological evidence, and the evidence of my life. I, 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 can, I know God is real for myself. Yes. Amen. <laughs> I, I know he's real. I've experienced God. I've, I've seen God move, but it's not just my experience because we just can't go off of personal experiences because if we, if we just went off of personal experiences, another person can have a different experience than what I may have. So we cannot just go off of that alone. But when you look at the word of God, look at the Biblical evidence mm -hmm. of the existence of God, the existence of Jesus, the existence of the people in the Bible, the existence of things taking place in the Bible, the existence of, 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 of the people that lived on the certain times in which the Bible says that they lived. When we look at the biblical evidence, mm -hmm. we know that God. Is real. Oh, I'm so glad that these women found the stone rolled away. You want to know another reason I'm glad they found the stone rolled away? Watch this. I'm glad they found the stone rolled away. Watch this. Because the enemy placed it there. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad they found the stone rolled away because the enemy placed the stone there. Hmm. Uh, sometimes we find ourselves in situations and it seems like we're stuck between a rock and a hard place. And sometimes our lives are stuck between a rock and and a hard place. And sometimes the enemy is the one for placing stones in front of us. Hmm, my Lord. But you know what? Although the enemy may place a stone in front of you, the stone is not too big that God cannot move it out of your way. Amen. <laughs> and for some of you, uh, the enemy keeps on placing stones in front of you. And although the enemy keeps on placing stones in front of you, God keeps right on rolling those stones away. Amen. <laughs> this year may not have been the best year and may not be the best year for you. But we serve a God that God keeps on rolling every stone away that the enemy places in front of you. Great Center, for every stone that the enemy placed in front of you, God has the muscle to roll it away. Mm -hmm. If you have addictions, mm -hmm. God can help you roll that stone away. Mm -hmm. If you have bad habits, God can help you roll that stone away. Yes. Low self-esteem, God can help you roll that stone away. Suicidal thoughts. God can help you roll that stone away. A bad temper, God can help you roll that stone away. Loss of a job, God can help you roll that stone away. Whatever stones the enemy places in front of you, God can help you roll it away. Mm -hmm. So here in the text, as the women are there at the tomb. Um, the word says that two angels, they show up on the scene. Uh, the women are afraid of the, 
appearances of these, these angels. But then uh, the angels delivered the news to them that Jesus is no longer there. All right. um, then they say in verse number five, they say, uh, uh, why seek the living among the dead? Uh, they're saying uh, uh, Jesus, the one who was behind this stone, is no longer dead, but he lives. Uh, he's not among the dead. And grace said, if God has rolled away the stones in your life, why are you trying to live among the dead? Mm. If the stone has been rolled away, you need to get up and leave the tomb. Mm -hmm. And some people have been in a dead place for so long that now they are beginning to stink. Mm. Uh, their lives are going to waste. My and God. God is saying, I have rolled away the stone. It's now time for you to come up out of the dead places of where you are at. Mm -hmm. The angels. Jesus. After the angels tell the women about how Jesus rose from the grave, verse 8, it says this. Verse 8 says, and they remembered his words. Hmm. I'm going to read that again. Verse 8, it says, And they remembered his words. Sometimes I wonder how many of us are forgetting what God told us. Hmm. <laughs> it's clear from the text that Jesus already told them what would happen to him. He told them how he would die and uh, uh, rise again. And you know what? They forgot. <laughs> he told them that he would die and he would uh, be raised from the grave. And they forgot what he told them. They forget what Jesus had promised them. And sometimes we also forget what God has told us. Hmm. Because sometimes when life backs us in a corner, it seems like we're just simply stuck between a rock and a hard place. And that may be the case temporarily, but that's not the case permanently. <laughs> Amen. Grace Center, the same power that raised Christ from the dead is the same power that saved you and that can help you. Yes. God does not suffer from muscle failure. He still has enough strength and power to take care of you. Mm -hmm. I'm closing now. Grace Center, remember this. The same way that God has kept his promise to his son Jesus by raising him from the grave it's the same way that God has also kept his promise to take care of you although right now it seems like you're stuck between a rock and a hard place grace center Jesus is not in the tomb He's not there. He is risen. He lives. And since he lives, no matter how many stones the enemy may place in front of you, God has the power to move those stones. Amen. I don't know what you're going through today. I don't know what you're facing on today. I don't know what's on your mind. I don't know what's keeping you up at night. But I'm here to tell you this right now. Although you may think you're stuck. Although you may think you can't go to the left or go to the right, but you're simply stuck in that situation. I'm here to tell you today. We serve a God that has power 
to move stones. Amen. We serve a God that has power to help you. In every situation that you may be facing, every situation that you may be in. So it may look like you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. But if you serve the same God that I serve, I'm here to tell you that God will not leave you like that. And God will help you. Roll away every stone that you believe is keeping you stuck where you're at. The virtual doors of the church are open at this time. The invitation is extended. Perhaps you're, you're not saved. You don't know Jesus Christ, the one we just taught about, about how he was in the tomb and he rose and he came out of the tomb by the stones being rolled away perhaps you don't know him personally but something was said to them that just clicked with you and you're saying I want to get to know this Jesus I want him to come into my life I want to have this relationship with Jesus if that's you, if you want to be saved today, saved meaning that you are saved from the wrath of God. That's what it means. You're saved from God's wrath. And when you receive Jesus as your Lord and your personal Savior, you reserve your spot in heaven. You reserve your spot in paradise. You reserve your spot to, to, to go to a place, to be in a place one day when you die and leave this earth. To spend eternity with Jesus. If that's you, if you want to make sure that you reserve your spot in heaven and that you spend eternity with Jesus and you want to be saved from the wrath of God on today. You can say this prayer along with me. You can say, Dear God, thank you for thinking about me. Thank you for having me on your mind. On today, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus came, that Jesus died, and that Jesus rose from the grave. If you have prayed that prayer, you're now saved. You have now reserved your spot in heaven to spend eternity with Jesus Christ. There are angels rejoicing and celebrating because you have prayed that prayer. And if you have prayed that prayer, we would love to hear from you. Please connect with us so we can connect back with you and help you along in this new walk with Jesus. For all others, any special prayer requests that you may have, you can let us know. You can send us a private email, private message. Reach out to us. We would love to stay in the gap and pray with you. Amen. All right. It is tithes and offering time. We have several different ways in which you may be able to give. If you go to our website, the Grace Center, G A. Dot org. Uh, click on that give link and it has all the different ways in which you may be able to give. You can give direct, directly through the site. You can download our Givelify app. You can give via Cash app, which is the Grace Center GA. Uh, you can also send your checks or money orders to us as well. Uh, once again, that website is the Grace Center ga.org Amen Alright Grace Center I pray and hope that this message on today has blessed you Look, share this word get the word out to others um, Look, I'm pretty sure many people need to hear uh, this word on today uh, and if you join us late um, I mentioned that next Sunday uh, we will not have virtual service. Uh, my wife and I would have to go out of town and do some family things. And there was no way I could figure out how uh, to have virtual service on next Sunday about what we have going on next weekend. 
Um, but we're going to have communion on second Sunday next month. Uh, second Sunday next month, we will have uh, communion. But next Sunday, we will not have service uh, at all. Amen. All right. Well, let's pray as we are dismissed on today. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we, we come to you now. We thank you now, Lord, for who you are. We thank you, Lord, for rolling the stone away from the tomb of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for rolling away the, the stones in our lives in a figurative sense. We, we've been through some things, experienced some things, and it was only you that got us out of certain situations. We thank you, Lord, for rolling those stones away. Right now, someone out there, they're in a situation where it seems like they're stuck where they're at. It seems like a stone is in their path and they just cannot remove it. I ask that you to help them to remove that stone, Father. Whatever they're going through, help them, Lord. They're, they're in need. They're crying out to you. They're asking you. They're begging you. They're pleading you. They may be fasting and praying and reading your word and crying at night saying, Lord, help me with this situation. Lord, help them with that stone to be removed from their lives. For the ones who have given their lives to Jesus Christ on today, I pray that you will connect them uh, with individuals, with a local church that can help them in this new walk with your son, Jesus the others who are in need of different things in their lives. I pray that you will meet the needs in their lives to intervene in their situations. I pray that your will is done for them. I pray for the tithes and the offerings today. I pray for the ones who gave and those who wanted to give but just didn't have it. Bless them as well. And Lord, as we leave this place but never ever leave your presence, Please go before us and make every crooked place straight in our lives. We give you all of the praise, all of the glory, and all of the honor. It is in Jesus Christ's name in which we do pray. Amen. All right, everyone, until next time, the second Sunday of next month is when we'll be back. But until next time, be blessed. Take care. I love you.